Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you all to MSP lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. So I'm discussing now mass spectrometry since last uh, few lectures. So today, let me continue from where I had stopped. Let us begin with a simple problem such as this one. An organic compound exhibits M plus m plus 2 cation and m plus 4 cation peaks in the intensity ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 in the mass spectrum and also shows a singlet at 7.49 ppm in the 1 h NMR spectrum recorded in CDCL3. So, identify the compound. You have here 4 options are there 1, 2 dichlorobenzene, 1, 4 dibromobenzene, 1, 2 dichlorobenzene and also 1, 2 dibromobenzene. So, now uh, you have 4 options are there and obviously when halogens are there such as chlorine and bromine, m plus 2 and also m plus 4 peaks are expected. So, at this moment just by looking into it without looking into the NMR data, it may be difficult to identify in absence of NMR you can anticipate this compound to be one of these all 4. Of course, if you have mass, we should be able to identify in the absence of mass, just if the information given about m plus 2 peak and m plus 4 peak intensity that is 1 is to 2 is to 1, you may think that at least these two will come very close to it. But 1 HNMR shows only one signal. So, let us look into it. Let me draw the structure first, all uh, structures. First, let us analyze. 1 H NMR data here. So, just if you look into these two, chloro compound would be very similar 1, 4 and 1, 2. So, let us analyze bromo first. When we look into it, we can see clearly here you can do rotation like this or you can do rotation like this. You can see that all four hydrogen atoms are identical. As a result, it would show a single resonance 7.49. On the other hand, here these two are different and these two are different. You can say this one A, A, X, X, something A to X to spin system. So, here it is simple. So, that means since the value given here is 7.49, so without any hesitation we can tell the compound is 1,4 dibromobenzene. It also shows M plus 4 cationic peak here. So, this is very simple. Now, let us look into another little complicated not very simple problem. Mass fragments of IRCL cation in mass spectrometry shows 3 mass peaks at m by z mass to charge ratio 226, 228, 230 and also natural abundance of iridium chlorine are given here. 191 iridium is 37 percent whereas 193 iridium is 67 percent and similarly 35 and 37 chlorine abundance are 76 and 24 percent respectively. The intensity of the mass peaks are in the order 1, 2, 3, 4 are given. We have to identify the right intensity of these peaks, the right ratio of these peaks we should identify which are appearing at 226, 228 and 230. So, now actually I had simulated the spectrum for this one. So, now we see here 3 peaks here, you can see here 3 peaks are there at around 231, 230 and then around 220, 
8 and also around 226. If you just look into this, from here if you compare the abundance with respect to the mass, so this one, this one, this one are in the ratio of this. So this is the information one can get directly from the mass spectrum of IRCL. But on the other hand, how to calculate this one? So far this is little bit, uh, it appears like tedious, but it is not really. So I have highlighted here. Let us see whether this ratio we can arrive using the calculations. Now we know that we have iridium 2 isotopes and chlorine 2 isotopes are there, 191 iridium 37, 193 iridium 63 percent and then chlorine 35, 76 and let us designate them as x, y, a and b. Now if we consider this one possibilities 3.7 uh, well divided by 10 to make it simplified 3.7 x plus 6.3 y plus 7.6 a and 2.4 b. And now if, if I expand this one we get the values like this. This one can be simplified 28.12 uh, x a by m and then 47.82 due to m plus 2 and this is also m plus 2 and this is m plus 4. Now if we go for again making it simplified 28.2 for m and 56.7 is m plus 2 and this one for m plus 4. You just simplify and then make it less complicated multiply all this by 1.76 we get 49.49 126.6. So now the ratio we are getting and just if you look into the ratio here it exactly comes 49.5 is to 100 is to 26.6. So the correct option is A. So this is how you should be able to do it. Just look into it once again and uh, try to make yourself uh, comfortable in solving such problems. Of course, if you have one uh, isotope, it is very easy, but if you have two uh, atoms with different isotopes with different abundance one has to go for these two. So, there may be even more complicated ones where we have three having three different type of isotopes. Just uh, if I find more examples I would come back with such examples in my lectures at the end of this lecture series. So now let us look into the information we can get from mass spectra. Okay, for example, if we have a simple hydrocarbon like CN, H2, N plus 2, what information we can get by recording mass spectrum for this molecule. So the different type of atoms present in the molecule that comes directly by looking into the molecular formula we get and also the number of each atom present in the molecule that information also one can get it. If it is an organic molecule, it also gives information about saturation, unsaturation, presence of cyclic groups and also other functional groups. For example, if you consider CN H2 N plus 2, it has N plus 1 pairs of hydrogen atoms. For example, if I take C4 H10 is there, this is N, N plus 1 would be equals 5, 5 pairs of hydrogens are there. So that means if the molecular formula is CN H2 N plus 2, there are n plus 1 pairs of hydrogen atoms are there. Presence of a ring, a double bond reduces the number of hydrogen atoms pairs by 1. If there is a ring or if there is a double bond, it reduces the number of hydrogen pairs by 1. For example, if you look into cyclohexane, if you look into cyclohexane, the H12 is there and instead of it is normal hexane, it should be 6, 14. So now if you see here, n plus 1 will be here 14 should be there, n plus 1 will be 7 by 2 equals 7 should be there but 6 are there. So it reduces by 1. Similarly, when double bond is there it takes away 2 hydrogen atoms on both the carbon atoms. So again it will be reduced by 1 pair. So in case of organic molecules, as I mentioned molecular formula gives number of atoms and their types, the saturation, unsaturation cyclic, acyclic, whether the cyclic is aromatic or non-aromatic, this information we should look into. Then if it is not readily possible, we have to use empirical formula that is to find out hydrogen deficiency that is called index of hydrogen deficiency which is given by this simple uh, formula C plus 1 minus half H minus half X plus half N where X is other heteroatom like oxygen or halogen. 
index is the sum of the number of rings, double bonds and twice the number of multiple bonds. So now if you consider saturated hydrocarbons such as CN, H2, N plus 2, we can apply this uh, index of hydrogen deficiency and we shall see. So this formula says N plus 1 and half, half into 2N plus 2, this is equal to 0. So that means here hydrogen deficiency is not there, that is 0. That means we can say if 0 value is there, we can say that the organic molecule is saturated. So now let us examine for uh, uh, different compounds here. Let us look into chloropropane. We have 3 carbons are there, so C plus 1 will be 4 and then 7 hydrogens are there, 7 by 2 and then 1 chlorine is there here, so half, so then this is 0. Again, this is a saturated compound. So then we will look into this one, 4, 3 carbons are there, 4 and uh, 6 hydrogens are there, so 6 by 2, 3. Of course, oxygen we are not considering anything, then it says that there is one double bond in this one. Of course, this is an aldehyde. Now look into this one here, 3 chlorine atoms are there and if you just look into index, 5 carbon means it is C plus 1 is 6 and then we have 9 hydrogen atoms are there, 9 by 2 and then 3 chlorines are there, 3 by 2 it is 0. Again, this is a saturated organic compound. So when we look into this one here, cyclohexane, 6 carbon atoms are there, so C plus 1 would be 7 and then uh, 12 hydrogen atoms are there, 12 by 2 is 6, so one ring is there here, so this one. And similarly, when we look into C6H6, 7 will be C plus 1 and then 3 pairs are there, 4. That means here uh, one ring and 3 double bonds are there, one ring is there and 1, 2, 3 double bonds are there. So here the hydrogen deficiency index is 4 here, so this is how we can calculate the hydrogen deficiency index and then we can start applying that molecular formula to arrive at the right structure of the molecule. Uh, once the data is obtained from different fragments and ion peak is, parent ion peak is obtained from mass spectrum. So now let us look into the factors which governs the hydrogen deficiency index. So it is very easy to find out uh, the hydrogen deficiency, so involves very simple considerations. In a acyclic hydrocarbons, in acyclic hydrocarbons, n carbon atoms have n plus 1 pairs of hydrogen. If you look into CnH2 n plus 2, so n carbon atoms would have, n carbon atoms will have n plus 1 hydrogen atoms. Two carbon have three pairs, index is 0 no rings are double bonds. So it is very easy to identify saturated hydrocarbons. Any added divalent atom shall not alter this number if it does not form a ring or double bond. This is very important. Any added divalent atom shall not alter this number if it does not form a ring or double bond. For example, O is there, OH is there, so only one it does not alter. For ethanol and dimethyl ether have 3 pairs of hydrogen index is 0. So that means as long as it does not form a ring or double bond, this divalent atoms do not alter this hydrogen deficiency index. That is the reason in the previous case we did not consider anything for oxygen. If X replaces H, formula should have both H and X. Since every nitrogen adds an extra H to the molecule, half N must be added, that is the reason we are adding half N. And then for example, methylamine and dimethylamine, trimethylamine, etc. So this is applicable only if N and P make 3 bonds. As long as they are trivalent, whatever I said holds good and S and O should have 2 bonds and H and X should make only 1 bond. Now let us look into the general principles involved in the fragmentation of uh, ions in electron impact mass spectrometry. So molecular collisions at very low pressure is very rare in electron impact mass spectrometry. The mass spectral fragments are unimolecular decompositions. The extensive fragmentation in electron impact is due to the instability of radical cations and excess of energy associated with electron impact methodology and most of the fragments are even electron cations 
formed due to bond cleavage. For example, if M plus is there and when it undergoes fragmentation, it can give P plus and P product ions. And MS fragmentation is governed by the stability of the product ions that in turn is based upon certain chemical principles. So, what are those chemical principles? Let us look into it one by one. Stability of carbocations follows the order tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary carbocation which in turn more stable than a primary carbocation and fragmentation is less likely for stride chain compounds. When we are considering stride chain compounds, fragmentation is less likely and this fragmentation increases with increase in branching. So, linear molecules are likely to fragment more and it increases with increase in the degree of branching. So, that means you can see less fragmentation and very simple spectrum in case of linear stride chain compounds like linear stride chain hydrocarbons like pentane, decane, etc. And linear molecules are likely to fragment more and it increases with increase in the degree of branching. For example, if you consider like this and it can R radical and it can give something like this carbocation. How about saturated rings? Saturated rings lose their side chains. If the saturated rings have some side chains, they readily lose them and then a radical would come out and we will get some cation something like this. Due to resonance, allylic carbocations formation is favored. Here uh, the resonance what happens? It favors the formation of allylic carbocations. For example, if you consider here the fragmentation happens between alpha beta and then radical comes out and then we get this allylic carbocation here. And of course, you can see here the resonance is there. And beta cleavage is very probable in alkyl substituted aromatic compounds. Just look into this compound with side chain. Here this is the possible site for cleavage and our radical comes out and we get a cation like this and we end up getting some alkyl substituted aromatic compounds will cleave in this way. And C C bond next to heteroatoms is prone to cleavage. C C bond next to heteroatoms is prone to cleavage provided we have some heteroatoms in the side chain. For example, we consider here we have a heteroatom and then the side chain C C bond next to this one is this one. So, here the cleavage is anticipated again a radical would come out and we get something like this because here this is going to stabilize this one. The carbocation is stabilized by pi donation from y. If pi is let us say n, o or something like that, so they can readily stabilize them through pi donation. And the elimination of neutral and stable molecules such as carbon monoxide, water and ammonia, HC and H2S is another possibility during the cleavage. For example, if you consider something like this, here CO can come out or if you consider something like this here H2 CO can come out. So, these are all possible possibilities which leads to neutral species along with cations or cation radicals. Rearrangements often resist or compete with fragmentation that means they resist bond cleavage if the activation energies are very low. So, electron ionization produces ions with low internal energy. So, only simple rearrangements should be considered in case of electron ionization whereas, in case of electron impact this is other way around. Cleavage is often associated with elimination of small stable neutral molecules such as CO, H2O, NH3 and HS. So, let us look into now the rearrangements that happens when a molecule is subjected to mass spectrometer through electron impact or chemical ionization. During electron impact, rearrangements occur instead of bond cleavages if they require low activation energy. Since electron impact produces ions of low internal energy, only simple rearrangements are anticipated. Such rearrangements are often accompanied by migration or elimination of species such as H2O, N2, CO, CO2 or sometimes olefins or even alcohols. Okay. So, now let us look into the rearrangements. For example, if you take uh, this species here, the cleavage happen either here and also here. In that case, what happens? You can see the elimination of ethylene and here you get a cationic radical of this type. And again, this cationic radical of this type can also give a ether radical and then CO2. So, CO2 elimination from a carbocation 
also can happen during rearrangement process. Now, let us look into representative electron impact mass spectra of organic compounds considering starting from simple saturated hydrocarbons to aromatic hydrocarbons and unrelated compounds with functionalities. So, now to begin with let us consider saturated hydrocarbons mass spectrum of linear hydrocarbons display molecular ion peak which provides the molecular weight. So, that means it is very straightforward saturated hydrocarbons provide molecular ion peak and which can directly give us information about the molecular weight. And MCH3 peak is always weak and due to the detachment of a CH2 fragment, so there will be the loss of 15 mass units for every fragmentation. So, that means if the fragmentation happens, you can see every fragment will be losing 14 mass units due to the elimination of CH2, CH2 has 12 plus 2, 14. So, you can see here hexadecane molecular weight is 226 here. You can see out of 16 you can see very nicely you know, all fragments are shown here up to C2 fragment here yeah, and it is a very interesting one, but it is very simple to analyze. Let us look into uh, more such examples in my next lecture. Now, it is saturated hydrocarbon we looked into it. Now, we should go for unsaturated hydrocarbon and then aromatic groups like that. So, let us continue uh, discussion on mass spectra of different type of organic molecules in my next lecture. Until then, have an excellent time. Thank you.